Okay, everyone. This is Matt. I'm Panda Garage. No, what you? Alright, <laughs> fire out. Alright, g'day everyone. Matt from Panda Garage here. We're back after being absent for a week. Um, been a bit crook and ran out of my backlog of videos. So, we're back again though. We've got a whole lot of videos that we're going to film today, tomorrow, possibly the next day. We've got a fair few things going on. Very excited. I'm trying to get the last few things done before the wedding. So, um, hopefully I can knock out a fair few videos and that and I've got enough so when I'm away you guys can still get all the content that you want or at least once every week alright today what we're going to do is actually um, do something that I've been meaning to do for a while and I've been trying to find someone to actually help me with it so I've turned to just doing it myself and getting a special kit for it so what we're doing today is we're going to bleed the brakes of my Monaro and we're going to use a one man brake bleeding kit. So basically essentially what it is, it's um, just a little container, it's got a magnet on it, um, it sticks to the the caliper so I can actually um, bleed it myself without needing anyone because no one's willing to help me. And so as simple as that, so hopefully we can work this out together, I've never used one of these before so um, hopefully um, it all goes well and uh, we don't catch anything on fire. So. Let's begin. I'm going to jack up the car, take the wheels off, and then we'll start from there. So, stay tuned. Now, for whatever reason, that was really painful today. It seemed like that went on so long. Anyway, we've got the wheels off, got the car jacked up. Now, let's look at these brakes. All right, so today, we're using this kit. It's SP Tools um, Magnetic Brake Bleeder Kit. Um, it's basically just for one man, get out of your woody. So, the idea of this is, so you attach this, and it just connects anywhere connection and then we'll run our pipes around the back here where the bleeder is actually it's underneath no it's not as you can tell I have not done this for a long time and last time I did this I think it was like eight years ago maybe it's been a while I haven't really needed to bleed for any breaks or well, I've had someone else do it but I'm telling myself to do it this time um, and I know that when I replaced these calipers which was just before I started this channel uh, I, I replaced the rotors and the brake pads but I never actually bled the system because I was told you could do it without it but mine needs it there, there's air definitely trapped inside it so we're going to get started so we're going to use super dot four um, which is really good for any um, form of Holden Commodore, Monaro, HSV, any, uh, I just would recommend sort of, yeah, VT to VZ series cars. I'm um, not too sure if they used anything different before that or after that, but we're just going to stick to this at the moment. But um, if you don't know what dot four is or dot three, the code that they say on the back of Holden is HN1796, which you'll find on top of your... Um, Reservoir, so we'll have a look at the reservoir now because we're going to need to make sure we keep that topped up as we go along So this is the reservoir. We've just got to unclip this Ugh, Yuck It's looking pretty filthy at the moment to be honest Nasty ass Brake fluid So we're going to just work on this today because I really want to make sure that I get these brakes absolutely perfect because they're a bit spongy at the moment and I don't like it at all. Um, I know that it's a common fault with Commodores of this model where the brake does travel a lot but it shouldn't have the sponginess that this does. So I want to make sure the car is safe um, because after the wedding um, I want, we're going to do a bit of driving that so I want this to be perfect. So I've just been looking at this, um, how to do it all. Because it's, uh, it's new to me. So what I've done is 
I think you plug this into the hose. I've stretched it out a little bit using this. So this bit goes into the actual um, nozzle because it doesn't seem to be able to stretch a pipe over the top of it. Um, I'm not too sure if this is the right way. We're going to find out though. So I've got that in there. This runs down into the little container here. The little container just twists off. And we've got a little hose in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of brake fluid to the base of this. Just so we don't have any air get sucked up into the system. So we're going to pull this in here. Now let's see if that gets to the base of this. Twist that off and we'll see if that's touched the hose. Yep, beautiful. Alright, so what we're going to do, just going to lock this up like that. Got that on the end, so. That's on there like that. So we are going to fill up the reservoir. Just make sure that's high because you do not want that to get empty. Otherwise, you're going to have to start all over again. And then we'll get in the car. We'll pump the brake a few times. And then we'll release the pressure. Hopefully, we'll get some air out of this. So wish me luck. We're going to get in the car. We're going to pump the brakes. And see... See what happens. Oh. We've pumped them. Now we're going to see what happens next. Well, let's hopefully. <coughs> hopefully, wish me luck. So I'm using a 10 mil spanner. Just going to pop that over there. Pop this on top. Let's. See. Oh, there we go. Here it comes. Slowly going. Wow, this is slow. <laughs> Got a bit of gunk in it. Maybe now I'll stand on it. Looks clean to me. And that's basically, we just forced most of the air out of this. And it's filled that container up, as you can see, it's pretty filthy looking. Um, so we're going to go around to the next side now. Um, we'll start that and then we'll work our way to the back. See how we go. Alright, as you can see, that's actually dropped down a bit. So we're going to just top it up. Back up to the next line. And we'll continue on. Alright, so we gotta spray this side now. Now that we sort of know what we're doing. So we'll put some WD 
D40 on that. It's got a bit of air in it. Pop that up on there. Using our 10 mil spanner again. Now we'll go pump the brakes. Right, so we've pumped our brakes. So hopefully this loosens off. We have a good steady flow. Oh. So we're gonna have the same problem again. Very slowly. Seems just like there's a lot of gunk in the system. I'm not really seeing too many air bubbles. I'm sure this looks absolutely thrilling right now. Just keep that going until... I mean, there's a lot of cases where this is like so much easier because I've got no one else that can really help me with this sort of stuff. Plus, I'm sort of a black sheep in my group of friends because none of them are really into cars like I am. So, I do most of this stuff myself. So, it's handy that I can do this myself. But generally, if you've got a second person, that's always a good way too because you can actually get the pedal feel straight away, which is awesome. All right, I don't see any more bubbles coming out of this, so we'll tighten this up oh, nice and tight like that. Yep. all that drain into the system all right so there that's our front brakes I'm going to knock out the rear brakes now so we might make that a bit of a time lapse because it's basically the same as the front ones all right, so we've got the front done. We're working on the back now, so it's all going to be time lapse from here until the end. All right. All right, so I've got the rear wheels off. I've put the front wheels back on. Sweaty work. Whew. 
All right, so we're going to continue on. We're going to bleed the brakes down, and hopefully it all goes well. And hopefully the brakes actually work a lot better because I'm, that's what I'm really hoping for at the moment because they're very, very spongy. So let's see how we go. Alright guys, so we are going to test the car out now. Got it all Ooh. Let's just get this car out first. Hopefully nothing explodes off it. Make sure to miss the bins. Alright, so yeah, it took a little bit to um get it all patched back up together. And a bloody exhausting day, I can tell you that. But if this has even improved them slightly, I'll be happy. That means I can always, I can always get some um, something's rubbing back there. Traction control lights on. Well, what we'll do is we'll head home, we'll analyse what the hell has gone wrong. So it's only a matter of time before I busted someone else up. Alright guys, so I brought the car back, um, gave it a bit of a test drive again after the little incident there. Um, it turns out I just started the car up again and the the codes went away and it might stop making that weird noise. So what um, I might do next time is I might actually flush the whole brake system out. Like the brakes are definitely better, but there's still a little bit more room for improvement. Plus the, the actual um, brake fluid itself looked a bit murky, so it looks like it hasn't been done for a while. But Otherwise, successful day. So definitely, if you can do it yourself um, with that kit, um, it would actually work out really well for you. So uh, remember, guys, um, we're on Facebook under the Panda Garage, Instagram as well, the Panda Garage. Uh, making videos every single week coming out on a Wednesday. So it'll be out actually out today. I'm, this is actually Wednesday today. So I'm going to edit this up and make sure it goes up today. Um, until next time, guys, um, this has been Panda Garage, and I'll see you in the garage next time. So we've only got a few more weeks before I go on holiday. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for um, all the new videos, and go back and watch some of the older videos. I'll really appreciate it. So until next time, guys, um, my name's Matt. This is Panda Garage, and we'll see you soon in the next video. So catch you later.